Let's be frank with ourselves. Life is getting more hectic and demanding all the time, and we aren't getting any younger. It seems that there's only one way to cope. Multitasking. A stupidly high amount of individuals all over the internet known as gurus, life hackers, and clowns are trying to convince you of that very fact. The whole concept behind it is that it increases productivity and the efficiency of the individual. Even though millions of people all over the internet support the idea, similar to flat earthers or moon truthers, it's still just a theory with no major study behind it. Ironically, the whole concept of multitasking can be compared to juggling balls. Juggling one ball or doing one task is relatively simple for your brain to focus on. Two balls split your brain's focus, making one have more mistakes. And three or more balls is just chaotic and it's going to be a mess, no matter how good one is initially. To truly debunk the false theory of multitasking, let's start off with one ball and talk about what is multitasking. What happens in your brain? Next, let's move on and add our second ball and talk about how multitasking affects us every, in our everyday life. And lastly, as we add our third ball and things become more chaotic, let's ask the question, how has multitasking been impactful globally? But before then, let's hold our first ball up in the air and ask the question, what is multitasking? According to journalist Kristen Rosen, the term was first used in the 1960s to describe computer productivity. The human brain, however, is not a computer, and the definition changed with it over time. Today, multitasking is defined as the ability to do multiple things in a short amount of period of time, by Cambridge Dictionary, and is typically used to describe human beings. Moreover, unlike computers, human attention is a very minimal resource. The American Psychological Association, or APA, describes visual attention like being like a spotlight. It can only be shown in one direction at any one given time. And this, our primary focus, what we're paying most attention to, is the center of the spotlight. It can also be visualized as a camera lens, because one can choose to narrow their focus and focus on details. Or one can choose to widen it and be aware of multiple things simultaneously but one can't narrow in and out at the exact same time. Even though in this context, multitasking should be impossible, but our brain for some reason still encourages this action of zooming in and out at the same time. Dr. Nicholas Carr states that our own brains encourage multitasking because it craves information even though in reality, it's not that good at processing it at the, at the speed and intensity that we find ourselves today. It, that is partially due to the fact that multitasking is related to short-term working memory. Short-term working memory is basically, is basically the context of your consciousness at any given moment. What you're aware of right now is part of your working memory. What you're not aware of is not part of your working memory. And the whole concept of working memory can easily be explained in the 1960s book, The Magical Number 7. In the book, the author stated that one's working memory can only hold seven different pieces of information. That's it, the maximum. Whether that be a seven-digit number or the name of seven different people. If people take in too much information, of, such as studying last-minute people or a test, a phenom phenomenon tends to happen where things are entering and exiting your brain at the exact same time. This is quite literally cognitive overload, where your brain is focusing on too many things at once and can't pay close attention to anything. Now, now that we know why we multitask and what biological consequences are there, let's move on and talk about how multitasking affects our daily life. According to those gurus that I mentioned earlier, multitasking can be categorized into three different groups or three different ways that we use in our life. The first one is doing two tasks simultaneously. The second one is moving back and forth from one task to another. And lastly, is to do a number of tasks in rapid succession. Most people, including you and me, do one of these tasks at least once throughout our day. So it's nothing new. In fact, Professor McFain Atkins states that most people multitask in their daily lives because they want to increase productivity and FOMO. 
Wait, what's FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. People fear missing out in emails, text messages, Instagram notifications, and tweets. This is also the same reason most people check their Instagram feed while they're on their toilet or watch cute cat videos while they're in college lectures. FOMO inherently causes us to be connected and it's triggered by notifications that we receive on our phone, computer, and smartwatches. Because of this, we're constantly connected, which inherently isn't a bad thing, it's just we fail to look at the consequences. One such example is attention span. As multitasking has been on the rise, attention span has not. Mrs. Aya Musta stated that the attention span of millennials has dropped to eight seconds in the last few years alone. And the attention span of Gen Z, my generation, has dropped to 2.8 seconds. Even though multitask has been on a rise, or in, uh, has been on the rise, she states attention span has been in a direct inverse correlation with it, with attention span dropping as multitask increased. On top of all of this, teenagers or Gen Z, my generation, multitask so much that we're on our phones six six hours a day. That's almost a full time job. I wonder what we're doing in those hours. Most of the time, uh, people multitask on their phone is usually at work or during their job. Both of these times, FOMO is the strongest and there's a sharp increase in boredom. That's why people pick up their phone. Now, I'm not trying to discredit people's way of life, including when I go to work or when I go to school, I always check my phone. But what I am saying is when people multitask to increase productivity or to quench their boredom, the exact opposite happens. Now, let's add our third ball and talk about the major impacts of multitasking. Up until now, we've been mainly focusing on the more goofy and fun sides of multitasking, but it can kill. Multitasking at your home or at work is perfectly fine with little harm. But engaging in distracted driving behind the steering wheel can kill. The Central Disease Center, or CDC, has stated roughly nine people die every day due to inattentive driving. Meanwhile, another 4,000 people get injured every single day in the US because they chose to take their eyes off the road. Even the most mundane act of listening to music, talking to your friends, or daydreaming can, be, can decrease the intention of the driver. Multitasking is one of the key reasons why car crashes happen. Car crashes happen within seconds. And the driver is expected to react within seconds. But multitasking and car activities undermine this reaction time. On top of this, not only car accidents are caused by multitasking, but many other people die because of various activities and their inattentive action or observing. Take example using power tools or soldering. Thousands of people die all over the world because they're not paying attention to where they're drilling or which two wires they're soldering. They believe they can text and drive at the same time. They buy into the false theory of multitasking. The primary problem of multitasking isn't that it decreases productivity, it's that it distracts the user. Now, now that we hit the end of our show, let's look back and see how our show was. Thinking about it, we can see the analogy of multitasking and juggling was perfect. Because juggling one ball is simple. Two ball is relatively hard. And three balls is just chaotic. As you just saw, I try to split my focus on all three balls, but I failed. Multitasking does the same thing to your brain. Multitasking is the key reason why people lose focus in multiple subjects. At the end of the day, most people should treat multitasking as a parasite. It lures you in and at the beginning shows you some progress. But once you start, it decreases all your productivity and causes you to have many problems. Most people, including me, are deluded into the false promises of multitasking. 
Now, I'm not telling you to stop multitasking. In fact, I'm not telling you to do anything. What I am telling you is that next time when you're lured in to these delusional false theories, make sure you know the consequences beforehand and make sure you know that multitasking is just a theory.